Hi everyone. We are going to demonstrate how to upload members into your MyPTEZ account so that you can utilize the MyPTEZ to talk to the Texas PTA website and upload your members and pay for your uh, pay the dues to Texas PTA using this process. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to log into MyPTEZ. Um, you want to make sure that when you go to admin, that membership management is available for you to click on. Um, if for some reason you cannot click on membership management, you need to do a support ticket with MyPTEZ. They have locked your account for some reason and they just need to unlock it for you. Once you're in the membership management, you will see a list of your members. Um, this is a demo account, so that's why ours is very minimal. And um, this is where any of your joinpta.org members will appear. They are submitted into your membership management automatically. The dues have already been submitted to Texas PTA and so has their name. So there's nothing left for you to do on that front. The dollar amount that goes to your local PTA's portion from that member will be automatically deposited into your PTA bank account in the following month that they became a member. So for example, if someone joins in August, that dollar amount for their portion that goes towards your PTA will go into your bank account, your PTA bank account in September, about the middle of the month. Okay, so while we're in here, I'm going to show you how to add a member by themselves, just one individual member. Um, this process takes, it's a little more time consuming, um, so we want to, you know, also show you the other way, but if you only have like one or two that you need to, to enter in, then this way can get the job done. So you are going to um, start typing in their name. Oh my gosh, it would help if I can type today. And then once I click on date, it's going to pop up either, you know, that it recognizes the person um, or it doesn't. So it does not recognize Donald Duck. So we are going to add Donald Duck um, as a member. Um, it will pop up this box asking what type of member it is. So this is where you will click on the type of member that uh, you have that you are entering. And we are going to say that Donald Duck is a student. This is where you can enter in more information about Donald or whichever member you are entering in. And um, the gender is a great way to keep track of that Mars award so that you can earn that Mars award. So I'm going to go ahead and put that he is a male because I really want to earn that award. So then um, on address info, this is where you would put their email. Emails are required in order for you to do the digital upload because since we send them the member a digital card on your PTA's behalf, we have to have an email address for that member in order for the card to go somewhere. The process on Texas PTA will not allow you to submit that, that roster if email addresses are not listed. So what we highly recommend is, let's say Donald Duck did not provide me with an email address. Um, if he is a student, you can use a parent's email address or you can use a, gen a gen excuse me, a general um, email for your PTA for those emails to go um, because it has to go somewhere. So we're gonna put in an email address and YouTube does require us to blur that out. So that is why it is blurred out. And then it's now that I've entered Donald Duck in, I've entered all the information I want to enter for him. It's gonna ask me when he joined. Um, so because we're not in the new, at the time of this recording, we're not in the new membership year, so I need to um, do August of 2024. You will not do that, though. You will do whatever year that you are um, currently in, okay? So now you can see that Donald Duck has been added to our membership management. Okay, now that we've done that process, I'm going to show you how to do it the other way, um, the preferred way when you are doing more than, I would say more than five. Like if you've got a couple, the add member button down here on the bottom is a great tool just to kind of knock them out. But if you're doing more than five, then the spreadsheet is gonna be um, a great tool for you guys to get done. Okay, so you're gonna go into tools and you're gonna click import members. You are going to download this template. Gonna open it. 
maybe. There we go. And we're going to click enable editing. Um, when it comes to the spreadsheet, it has been designed to work with a MyPTEZ website. I know it may look extremely simple, but the, it does have, um, it, it is talking to the MyPTEZ website when you do the upload, which I will show you um, once we're done with this spreadsheet. So what we highly recommend is do not alter this first row at all. Um, it could cause your upload to not go through if it if you alter this in any sort of way. For member year, you are going to put the start of your membership year. So every membership year is August 1st to July 31st. So you would put, you know, for example, we're about to um, go into 25, 2025, 2026. So you would put 2025, okay? When you get to January of 2026 and further on, you will still put um, 2025. It will not change until the following August. Um, again, this is a demo. So since we are not in the new year yet, um, in order for me to actually demonstrate how to do this, I need to put 2024. Uh, but you will put the membership year that you are in that you are doing this upload, okay? Now for member type, just like I showed you on my PTEZ, and I'll go back. Um, just like uh, when we did Donald Duck, we wanted to make sure that the membership type matched what works with my PTEZ, okay? So these are the options that we have. When it comes to a staff member, they you know they may not be a classroom teacher, but we're still going to put teacher, okay? Um, we can't put stepmom or stepdad. Um, we can't put nana or papa or anything crazy. It has to be these particular member types when you are doing the spreadsheet, okay? So we are going to put parent, and we are going to put the names in. Okay. Um, you do have the option to just put a P or type out parent. It is your preference. Honestly, it doesn't really matter to Texas PTA or my PTEZ. Um, it just depends on what you want to put in. Um, you do not need the middle name. You definitely need a first name and a last name because anything that you put into the program that's gonna be what they have on their membership card. So you also wanna make sure that you're checking the spelling, making sure that everything looks good. Um, this is where a membership committee can come into play and you can have one of your committee members just double check you, especially if you're looking at handwriting that you know our members wrote on a form um, and you wanna make sure that it's legible and typed out correctly. Okay, then you are going to put the email. As I said before, the email is required. We cannot send them a digital membership card without an email address. So if you do not get an email from the person, you can ask them for it. You can explain to them why you need the, the email. Um, be upfront and honest with them. You know, Are you going to email them other than the membership card? Um, let them know why you need the email address. And most members are gonna be like, oh, okay, that's fine, no big deal. If you do not get an email address and you can't get one provided to you, I suggest using a generic um, PTA email address for all the emails with the digital cards to go to. And it's a great opportunity to print it and send it home with a student with a sticky note that says, hey, we didn't have your email address to email this to you. And maybe they would you know, send a note back or provide it in the future, okay? You can put the address, um, it is irrelevant to Texas PTA. It is up to you if you really want it in there. Um, most PTAs don't really ask for it, so it, it's just your personal preference. Same thing with a phone number. Texas PTA does not need a phone number, um, home or cell, not needed. Um, we do need to know if they are a life member or not. Um, life members are exempt from paying the Texas PTA portion of the dues. So it's very important that you put something in here for the lifetime column. Um, the life membership is not something that a, a member can just purchase and say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to be a PTA member for 20 years because I have kids and that's how long I'm going to be in public education. Um, it is an honor that is bestowed on a person. So the PTA must purchase the lifetime membership for someone that is getting that membership, okay? Um, so we are gonna put an N. Um, you can put an N, a Y, or you can type out no or yes. And then the next column over is gonna be a pay date. 
the pay date is irrelevant to Texas PTA. It is mostly for you guys to kind of keep your uploads straight um, to make sure that you're not overlapping them, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, but so the pay date is going to go right here. It does not need to be exact. It just needs to be, you know, what works for you. So for example, at the end of August, you could put everybody that joined in August joined on the same day, whether it was your meet the teacher day or your first day of school. Again, that is irrelevant to Texas PTA. We just need you to have a pay date in there. So when you start doing the uploads cons consistently, there's no overlap, which I will talk about um, when it's time to extract your list, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple more examples. You do have the option to um, drag down the year. So you're not having to retype it. Same thing if you are, you know, knocking them all, all the teachers out at the same time. You know, if you're doing that, you have them separated and stacked, you know, appropriately. Um, you could easily drag down uh, a couple of these columns. The one thing I do suggest is we want to, instead of deleting, you know, just going in here and hitting delete, I personally recommend highlighting and deleting the rows. Reason being is sometimes when um, you save, you're gonna save this file as a CSV file. When you save it as such, it might still see that data was once in that row and we don't want it to do anything to mess up your, your upload. So for personal preference, I like to go in and just delete the rows that I was messing with um, just to make peace of mind um, easier on me. Okay, and then we're going to do one more example. Okay, so now it's time to save our file. When we go in and we save our file, um, what I personally like to do is I like to recommend that you save it um, with a date range that works. So let me show you in just a second. You are going to save it as a CSV comma delimited file. Do not click on this one. This one's bad. We don't want that one. This one will not work with the upload, okay? You want to click on CSV comma delimited. That is the one that works for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to title this upload 8.1. Um, this is for me. This is um, to help keep my brain straight. Um, if you are doing your digital upload, you know, at the end of the month, then maybe to title it 8.31. Um, highly don't recommend that you wait until the last day because if you have any errors, you want to be able to troubleshoot in enough time. So um, I do recommend getting it done a couple days before the end of the month so that you can try to earn those membership awards. Um, I have also recommended doing the the Friday, every Friday or every Monday. It's just set up a schedule that works for you when you're going to sit down and add members to your, your membership management, okay? And then you want to title them something so when you, you know, if you save these spreadsheets to a folder on your computer, then you know which ones are there. And in case you're like, oh my gosh, did I submit this member? I cannot remember. Then you have the ability to go in and see kind of when they've been added. Okay, so it's been saved, upload.8.1, and I saved it as, as a CSV file, okay? So now I'm gonna close it out. And before I show you how to upload, actually, no, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to upload it. So we're gonna go to tools, again, and we're gonna hit import to member, okay? So it takes me back to the screen where I got the template. I'm going to choose file, and I'm gonna pick this one. And I'm gonna click on begin import. Perfect, okay, this is what you want to see. You want to see the word success. You want to see how many members were added. Um, you don't really wanna see anybody updated or skipped. If somebody was skipped, it will have 
a list of errors down here telling you why that member was skipped. Um, if a member was updated, that means that they've already been in your membership management and for some reason you just now updated them. So you want to have this happening, the, the members that you submitted right here. Okay, so now that those members have been uploaded into our membership management, we're gonna go back to admin and membership management and then you should see those names that you've just added into your list, okay? So that is a great um, little success right there and you'll see that your membership number has changed now i'm going to show you a print directory the print directory um, is very important whenever you need to verify membership at a membership meeting which you should be verifying membership at your meetings because only members are allowed to vote only members are allowed to participate in the business of a PTA meeting. So it's important that you have that list up to date. You have that list ready for your secretary or um, your, definitely your treasurer so that they can have the financial records um, taken care of. And so this is a great tool when you want to see how many teachers you have or how many um, male members that you have. So you can unclick on things you can click um you know unclick them and just say okay i only want to see who our teachers are and then you can do a print and they will pull it up okay um in here your source codes are api and my ptez so anyone that came in through joinpta.org their source code is going to be an api if they are somebody that you have entered in yourself, whether it's that green add member button or the spreadsheet that I just demonstrated, their code is going to be my PTEZ. Okay. So now I'm going to print, I'm going to do a print so I can see all of our members. All of our members in this demo account are all a my PTEZ source code. So you will not see a demonstration of API because the, again, this is a fake account. Um, but this is where you would see your members listed and the type of member they are, um, the, the data, the email address, everything that you would need to know what's going on with those members, okay? Your membership list is yours. It is your PTAs. You are not required to turn it over to anybody. So make sure that you're talking to your council or your field service representative if, if somebody's asking for your member directory. Okay. So that is how you upload into my PTEZ. Check out the next video to see how to get the list and submit that to Texas PTA. Okay, thanks for watching.